So let's get started. First thing I want to do is clear up one misconception. Um, all biologists think about evolution. It's central to our discipline. It's a bit like gravitation for a physicist. But I'm constantly dismayed that out there in the general um, public, sometimes it's misrepresented. And I can't point the fingers at others because I've heard scientists speak about it in a sloppy way that doesn't explain the facts. So I just wanted to make sure I showed you this so there'd be no confusion about this. Um, over here, I'm sorry, over on that side, the left, is what is the wrong theory. And that is the idea that human beings descended from monkeys. Um, Darwin never said that. That's not evolutionary theory. That's not what biologists believe. The theory of evolution simply states that all living things are related. And so it means that human beings share some distant ancestry with other animals. And in fact, our closest relatives we know from lots of information are chimpanzees. And we didn't descend from chimpanzees, but chimpanzees descended from an earlier life form that we also descended from. So we're sort of cousins, if you want to think of it that way. Today we're going to talk about adaptive evolution, and that means that today is going to be all about the different kinds of natural selection that there are. It's going to be about the vocabulary that evolutionary biologists use to describe selection. It's going to be about rates of evolution, why evolution is sometimes very fast, sometimes very slow. And it's going to be about the different contexts in which selection occurs. So we'll talk a little bit about sexual selection. We'll talk a little bit about group and species. Good evening, and thank you for coming to our second public presentation of Science Talks. Uh, tonight, we're very fortunate to have uh, Scott Edwards coming from the Department of OEB, Organismic and Evolutionary Biology. Shane campbell Staten here and Allison Schultz are also uh, key members of, of the force studying uh, reptiles, we call them bird ancestors, uh, and birds uh, respectively. To be sure, our lab does focus on using modern genetic techniques to study the evolution of birds, but all of our questions almost inevitably come from the field, and I encourage my... Now, to give you a broad overview of avian diversity, it's important to look not only at birds, but at some of their closest relatives. And it turns out that turtles and crocodilians, of all things, are turning out to be the closest living relatives of modern birds. Mais on a également euh, des mutations, qu'on va qualifier de chromosomiques, qui vont modifier la structure de nos chromosomes, qui vont remodeler les chromosomes. On va pouvoir perdre des morceaux, on appellera ceci une délétion. On va pouvoir dupliquer, donc recopier une partie, et on verra tout de suite après que dans les processus évolutifs, cette duplication est un élément clé. On a quand même vu avant qu'il y a un code génétique. Il y a une information. Donc, dans ces, ces lettres, peuvent avoir, ou le message qui est présent dans ces lettres peut à un moment donné être modifié. Ce qui va pouvoir engendrer peut-être une perte de fonction, une modification de fonction, voire une nouvelle fonction. Donc un génome, c'est une histoire, un ensemble de modifications qui euh, se produisent au fur et à mesure du temps, des mutations qui se produisent au hasard, donc des événements qui se font au hasard, sans contrainte ou sans forcément une contrainte, et qui vont ainsi constituer bah, l'un des moteurs essentiel de l'évolution. C'est ce qui va créer de la diversité, et cette diversité pourra ensuite être sélectionnée. Mmh. 